Today is the nine year anniversary of my brother's death and every year on his uh, anniversary I like to add meaning to it by doing some volunteer work or some service work and so that's what this is for me. Every day I'm reminded through uh, my kids, through my friends, um, through the special people who are in my life and for the purpose I've found in life, how grateful um, I am to be alive. Uh, and my brother is an example of what can happen when you lose that gratitude and you forget to look for the joy in the hard times. He took his life after a long but silent battle with depression and I too um, fought my own battle, uh, survived that battle, not unscathed because I have PNES, so I have, um, you know, battle wounds or scars and that's okay because it too adds as a reminder of how much there is to be grateful for because regardless of the challenges that I have now, before before I um, had PNES, I lived a life where I repeated the past. Um, I, I lived a life where the past kept repeating itself, rather. I held on to old hurts. I might have remind, remembered to forgive others, but forgot to forgive myself and ended up dwelling in the past instead of living for today. And that's something that I have been able to learn through this experience is how important it is to let go of the past, to forgive past hurts. And there are some very deep wounds, but the only person we're really hurting when we hold on to those hurts is ourself. My kids have this game um, on my phone. It's the Inside Out game. And I haven't seen the movie yet, but I really, uh, I really like the concept. It teaches the different emotions. And if it's anything like the game, I, I like the concept of um, clearing out old memories. That's the, the goal in the game, is to clear out cluttered memories. And it's very relevant to real life because when we hold on to those memories, especially when they're disorganized and cluttered, um, all grouped together, good memories with the bad memories, and it's just impossible to sort things out on a day-to-day -day basis when we're holding on to too much. So the point in the game is to clear out all the memories. And at the end of the game, if you fail that mission, it reads a message that you lost a life. And that too is a, a real reminder, um, and it's more relevant for me than maybe the average person, because I did lose my old life. Now, from this standpoint, looking back, I'm glad I gave it away. I look at it as I gave it away. I didn't choose PNES, it chose me. <laughs> but I will find the goodness in it and see how grateful I am for all the things that I have learned through my experience. A therapist once told me that our experience in life is like a, a stack of cards. We have good days and bad days and it all depends on how the cards are stacked in our minds. So if we're able to find the good in even the most difficult cir circumstances, we can change our experience and our relationship to that thought and change the emotion that's associated with that thought, which is really important as far as how our brains function. Now, if you're looking for recovery, and it is possible, I want to stress that. There are a lot of people who have not found it yet, who have not found a life that is seizure free, and it doesn't mean that it's not attainable, and it also doesn't mean that it is attainable for everybody. There are 
compounding issues with epilepsy. There are um, brain lesions and frontal lobes. There are a lot of different factors. It's not just all stress-related. In my circumstance, it was completely stress-related. There was no physiological reason for the seizures to start. But if you are looking for recovery, then you are definitely on the right path. One book that I'm reading right now uh, in my research is written by Dr. Daniel Amen, and I'll put a link to, um, to his website. And it's called Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. There is a large amount of information. It, it spans a lot of different challenges, and there is a lot um, related to the effects of stress on the brain a lot of explanation of how the brain works, the different areas of the brain. And he really does a great job of explaining how important it is to retrain our brain. Because our brain is a machine. We can rewire our brain based off of um, practice. So I encourage you to check this book out. I'll put a link uh, to his site. And, um, and also, he has a, um, a TED Talk. I'm completely addicted to TED Talks. They're amazing. Um, and I guess that's it for today. <laughs> I hope that you have a really, truly blessed day and can find the joy in all circumstances because that's where our individual salvation is from our symptoms. And I guess that is one last thing I want to say is over the last few days in my research, I've been coming to a new understanding of PNES. We look at PNES as a diagnosis, but truly PNES is a symptom of a larger issue. So if we get stuck on the diagnosis without addressing the fact that there is something, there's a root that we need to get to, we might give up before we ever see our way out of it. So um, that's, I guess, where I'll leave you. These seizures, these attacks that we experience, they are a symptom. They are not the overall diagnosis. It's like saying that somebody is um, has a diagnosis of depression. Depression is a symptom. It's like saying somebody has um, chest pain as a diagnosis. That's a symptom. Or a headache as a diagnosis. Those are symptoms of something bigger. And with anything, especially with the brain, when we get to the root issue, then we know what kind of challenges we are facing. So the goal is to not give up, to keep looking, keep searching, and just do the best you can today to make it as positive as possible. Try to see the goodness in it. Incorporate a little Pollyanna into ourselves.